everybody. I've been home for a while. I have just been so lazy. I just wanted to do a quick Q&A to touch base with everybody. Most of my time was spent in the four corner states. Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, and Colorado. The breakdown is this. My first night was in Louisiana. Then I spent five nights in Texas. And then I spent 20 nights total in New Mexico, but that was split up. Uh, at the beginning of the trip, I spent eight nights in Southern New Mexico. And at the end of the trip, I spent 12 nights in Northern New Mexico. So a total of 20 nights in New Mexico. I spent 20 nights in Arizona, five nights in California visiting Joshua Tree, 19 nights in Utah, and 30 nights in Colorado. Okay, so hopefully that adds up to 100. I spent six nights getting hotel rooms. I stealth camped 47 total nights. Of the 47 nights that I stealth camped, 41 of those nights were spent in hotel parking lots. I would just kind of discreetly park in the back corner of a hotel parking lot. I spent one night in a casino parking lot. I spent one night in a hospital parking lot and I actually spent four nights in paid parking garages in downtown areas, one in San Antonio and one in Telluride, actually up in the mountain village in Ten Telluride, right in the middle of the village. I'm learning that paid parking garages are actually a really, really great option as long as you're not breaking any rules. I'm not encouraging anybody to break any rules or laws, but uh, they're a great option when your destination is in the heart of a city or a town. Then I spent 44 nights in campgrounds. Okay, of those 44 nights, 15 of them were in paid campgrounds and 29 of them were free BLM land campgrounds. And then lastly, I spent three nights in Harvest Hosts. My Harvest Host membership just ended and I am uh, not sure if I'm actually gonna re-up that or even if they would allow me to because I think their rules may have changed and my little van may not even qualify anymore, but we'll see. Every single person that I met while I was traveling asked me this question, what's your favorite place so far? And it's hard for me because I really just enjoy myself everywhere that I go for the most part. I mean, I do have some least favorite places, but for the most part, I really, there's always something of value wherever I, wherever I go, wherever I visit. And um, so anyway, these are the ones, these are the places that really stick out in my mind as being like super cool. Santa Fe. I could move to Santa Fe. I love that it's a small-ish city that has everything that you need. I love the architecture in Santa Fe. It feels really different. It's a, it's a very active, vibrant downtown. They're always having events there. But also it's sort of nestled in nature. So you can be in town and then drive 15 minutes away and have a gorgeous hike in the middle of, of nature, you know, in the middle of wilderness. The next spot on my list is a favorite for the same reasons, Manitou Springs. Manitou Springs is one town. There are several towns and cities. Colorado Springs is right there too. So there's um, a lot of city life happening right there, but it's nestled in nature. And I mean like gorgeous nature. There's a garden of the gods and there's waterfalls and there's Pikes Peak and all these places that are so close by. There's something about Moab that just draws you to it. Like it's, it's like no other place on earth. I don't know, Moab, I love Moab. Palisade, Colorado. So Palisade, Colorado is not a place that I knew existed before I went on this trip. Someone suggested that I go there. Um, I love wine. I love wine regions. I've been to Napa several times. I've been to upstate New York's 
um, the Finger Lakes wine region. And so uh, it's just so fun to just go and wine taste. Wine tasting is also a really social thing to do, so that's always fun. I had a lot of fun while I was in Palisade. Zion National Park. Zion kind of feels like a theme park for nature lovers. I loved it. Um, I almost didn't do this one, but I'm glad I did, and that is driving Pikes Peak. Just such a unique experience. The views are unmatched. Um, the drive is unmatched. Like it's just, it's just insane. So um, yeah, that was pretty memorable. All the cliff dwellings, I would say, um, again, I didn't know that, that cliff dwellings existed, but learning about cliff dwellings and the native folks who lived there and just a, a really fascinating thing. My worst experiences, getting stuck in the sand. <laughs> that was not great. Uh, I would say Great Sand Dunes National Park. The wind was so extreme that I couldn't enjoy it. I couldn't really, I couldn't even really get close to it because I was just like, you know, walking against the wind the whole time. And then Price, Utah. Price, Utah was, I just, first of all, it's not a scenic place. It's not, a, there's no, I don't even know really why I was there. I think I went there because of the weather. I needed to get out of a heat wave. And I just immediately just didn't feel like it was a warm, welcoming, friendly place. So there is a lot more that I wanna see of Colorado and of Arizona. There are a few more places in New Mexico I would like to visit. Um, but certainly Colorado and Arizona, I could spend a lot more time in those two states. I mean, plenty of other states too, but of the ones that I spent time in on this trip, I would like to go back and spend even more time in those two states. Uh, Ca California is its own beast. I've been to California many, many, many times in my life, and I think you could just always keep going back to California. There's plenty of national parks in California that I have not seen yet. But this was not really a California trip because California is like its own country. Um, but uh, so Arizona and Colorado, I'd like to spend more time in. And um, in Arizona, one big regret was, was not spending enough time in Sedona. I did not visit Flagstaff. People t kept telling me well, during my, my trip that Flagstaff is a place that I might really enjoy. Uh, so I missed that. There's a small town in Southern Arizona called Bisbee that I um, also got recommended to me. So I'd like to visit Bisbee. There's a lot more in Arizona that I didn't see and wish I had seen or wish I had spent more time in. I re regret not going to Meow Wolf in Santa Fe. Meow Wolf is an art installation. Well, an art feature, is it called an installation if it's permanent? It's a permanent art installation, I guess we'll call it that where they got artists to design different rooms, kind of like trippy rooms in this, I think it's a 70 plus room experience that you kind of just wander through. And people kept telling me that I had to go see it. And I kept thinking in my head that I needed to go see it. And then just days went by and I just didn't go. Part of it is because I had to leave Cali in my car. And so I was trying to like find the right you know, a cool evening where I can safely leave her in the vehicle. And anyway, it just did not, it just didn't happen, but I will go to Meow Wolf at some point in my life. I regret not giving my number to John. So Callie is a 14 year old Chihuahua. I got her, I adopted her from the Humane Society five years ago. When I met her initially, her name was Kelly. K-E-L-L-I, I did not like that name. <laughs> I didn't want to screw her up too badly by completely changing her name, so I just replaced the E with an A and she became Callie. She's very much a one-person dog. Most people she meets she does not like. Occasionally she'll meet someone she does, just completely randomly. 
but usually she doesn't like people she meets, she doesn't like dogs, she doesn't like other animals. She is fascinated by cats for some reason, who knows why. She is so tolerant of all the travel that I put her through. The best part about van travel or vehicle travel is the fact that I can just pick up and go without having to make any reservations or cancel reservations or book anything. I can just go, you know what? I can make it there in a few hours and I can just go. It feels so free to just be able to pivot in that way. I also love having everything with me. Um, I can be wandering around downtown, my feet can hurt, I can go back to my van and change my shoes. Or it can start raining and I can go back to the van and just take a nap and just nap through the storm. Having your house on wheels right there at all times is incredibly convenient. My least favorite part about traveling in a vehicle is at times, rarely, but it does happen, um, you kind of, or I kind of, feel like I have no place. And I think this happens for me because I do spend a lot of time in cities. In campsites, I don't have that feeling because you do, even if it's a free campsite, you will pick out a place and that place becomes your spot. And so you don't really end up driving around aimlessly. But when I'm in town, um, I'll, I may get to a town in the afternoon uh, I might decide where I'm gonna stealth camp for the evening. When I'm stealth camping, I don't like to, to go to my stealth camping location until after dark or at least around sunset. And so there's a time between when I arrive and the time that I need to go, you know, go to bed or like you know, hunker down for the night where I have to find a place to go or something to do. Now that's doable if the weather is accommodating. If it's nice outside, I might go for a hike or wander around downtown. But if the weather is too hot or crappy outside, I will have a difficult time figuring out where to go and what to do. So sometimes it's just, I find myself just wandering around, just trying to find a space to just be. And that can be frustrating. Those are the questions for today. If you liked this kind of Q&A, let me know in the comments. Also like the video. And if you have other questions for me, leave those in comments and I may do another one of these. Thanks for watching and uh, 